Hello everyone, Flying Dutchie here! We are finally back with EU4! We are now in patch 1.31.3, which seems to be stable finally. Um, I did a run before this patch and unfortunately the patch in the, in the version 2 of the, uh, the 1.30 on 1.2, the uh, vassalization was not possible of minor nations and that completely ruined my run, so that is why there were no videos for a while. But now we have a more stable version where we can actually play the game. So that's what we are going to do. And we are going to go for a world conquest. I'm going to try it again. I will uh, see how long I can uh, be motivated for it. I hope for a very long time, of course. And actually complete this run. But I'm not going to promise anything because sometimes it can become very tedious in the end. But uh, we will see. I really want to conquer the world again. I never did the one faith achievement. I might try it. And uh, I also have a spreadsheet for you guys, but I will show it very soon, with all the things I'm going to do. Uh, so we will play as Muscovy. Um, do Iron Man. I don't know if I can actually get achievements, but uh, I just want to do a world conquest with maximum government capacity as Russia. That's going to be the game. Uh, I guess I can show the spreadsheet already before we jump into the game. Uh, let me see, that is over here. So this is going to be it, uh, the World Conquest, uh, but first I show you the maximum governing capacity. Uh, we can get 3200, and then with all the modifiers that you can get as Russia, you can get the maximum. Um, there's one in yellow, the Holy Roman Empire Idea 7. I don't think we're going to get it, because of uh, the World Conquest. We want to destroy the HRE when the uh, League Wars happen. And hopefully we can get lesser kinds of expansion there and just steamroll at some point when we have maybe a million men in the field. Because that could also happen. Um, so yeah, I don't think we're going to get the uh, yellow Roman idea 7. But we might have 78% bonus and then we are well, close to 5800, 5900. And we of course built courthouses, and then town halls upgrade of the courthouse and state houses. And especially state houses on paper, glass or gems. To completely reduce the governing capacity and see how many states we can make. Now for the world conquest you can see the idea groups. Um, we will start with religious because we are orthodox. Everyone around us is not orthodox. So we can use the Deus Volt CB um, at some point. It's a good uh, casus belli to have. And of course we want to try to one faith. So we want to convert all our provinces to orthodox. Which is a very good religion. Uh, then we go to... Uh, Defensive, just to have a military idea. And as Russia, defensive is very handy for attrition. I actually don't remember if the AI gets attrition. But also the morale boost in the start of the game is very, very nice to have. Um, then we will go with influence and then admin. Influence will help with uh, more diplomats, will help with the uh, vassalization, uh, the integration cost. And admin, administrative ideas we need for... The government capacity, but we also want the core and cost reduction. And when we complete influence and admin, you can see uh, the first policy. There's another minus 20% diplo annexation cost. So uh, together with influence, you have minus 40%. That is very handy for world conquest. So you can integrate nations uh, very, very quickly. Now you can see that uh, the fifth one is diplomatic. It's very uh, useful for uh, uh, province war score cost and more diplomats to ease people around you. Um, and then we can see what we are going to do. But I think quality is going to be nice. And trade and quality as well. Um, quantity, I'm not really sure about. Maybe we'll change it. Because as Russia, you already have a big army because of your national ideas. But we will see in the end. And if you have any tips and tricks about which idea group I should take. Or a policy that I should really take for the uh, World Conquest or the uh, One Faith. Uh, do we get maybe an extra missionary from, from a policy? I don't think so, but if there is one, please tell me in the reaction step. That would uh, that would be really helpful. Okay, let's go back to the um, to the game scene here. So we are in the game. Um, you can read this. Uh, this run will not be very uh, slow. I'm not going to explain everything. Uh, what I sometimes do in my runs. This will be a world conquest. We need to play the game. Otherwise, it's going to take more than 100 episodes, and I don't want to. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to play a bit, well, a bit quick. Quicker than normal. But not make any mistakes, hopefully. 
Uh, so yeah, we are orthodox. Uh, you can read this. We can do a couple of things because we have uh, the third Roman D DLC. We can consecrate metropolitans in our states. And we can use a uh, an icon for patriarch authority. Now we will go over that when the time is there. We are a monarchy. We have a Russian government. We can do three things. We can reform Subtenik. We can support the Oberichnina and the Raising Strelzi. Uh, we will go over that as well at some point. We also have the Cossack estate that we need to take care of. Uh, and this is just some more information. So, at the start of the game, you have five vessels. Uh, we have Belusero, Yaroslavl, Rostov, Perm and Pskov. And in the start of the game, as Muscovy, you get missions to conquer all of Novgorod. And we will. I'm not going to uh, give more land to my vessels. I want to integrate them because I have other plans. Because we want to conquer this region. Why do we want to conquer this region? It isn't the same culture group, so we don't get a penalty for the culture there. And it is orthodox, but currently owned by Lithuania, who is Catholic. So if we conquer this, we will have uh, almost no penalties and get the full value of all these provinces here. And that is going to be very, very handy at the start of the game. I'm not going to expand into the Sunni lands that quickly. Uh, because I want to get religious ideas first before I want to deal with the unrest of it. And it's also the goal to take... Where is it? The transfer subjects thing of the Age of Discovery. Go to War of Denmark and hopefully we can get Norway or maybe Sweden as our own vessels. This way. And make it our vessel immediately. Um... So that's going to be the, the short plans. Just conquer Novgorod. Uh, maybe release some nations over here. You can release, for example, one province from Polotsk. One from Smolensk. One from Chernigov. And there was another one. Uh, Kiev is over here. Saporozhi is here. And when you release one province and you, re and you make them your vessel, you can do a free reconquest CB with no aggressive expansion. And take all this land. Uh, very, very uh, smart, I would say. It's a smart way to conquer. Now, let's go to our estates. Because I also seize land at the start of the game. I always do that. Because you can do it for free. Just before they get uh, unhappy. Maybe I should stop explaining. Because otherwise, <laughs> we will never end this one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm just... I always like to explain. I will go to stability 1. Why? Well, very important if you don't know. If you are at stability 1, you can gain prosperity in all your estates. And uh, it takes a while, but when you are prosperous, you get more goods produced, which is a huge modifier. And it goes in, that goes into our trade node that we own, so we make more money. And we also get development costs, and we want that in Moscow because we want to get the Renaissance. Um, so yeah, I can, also, I, I can also consecrate a Metropolitan. Now, I don't know... What people think about this. I think it's not good. You can do this. When you have 30 development in your uh, state. That are fully court, orthodox and of an accepted culture. At the start of the game. And there is a map mode for it. We can do it here. Here and here. These are the three states that are fully Russian I would say. But when I click this button. I get 5% Patriarch Authority, which is fine, but we also get events in the game that give 5%. And for the rest of the game, the state maintenance goes up with 10%. Why do I want to get a state maintenance modifier of 10% for the rest of the game for 5% Patriarch Authority? We don't need that. I will only do it in my capital here. And you cannot remove it. That's the whole thing. Why do I want this? I don't I don't know. Because the devastation will not go up when we are uh, defending the region and but we do get more maintenance. So 85% is nothing compared to what we get later in the game of events. So I I I only do it here and then stop it. I'm not going to do it in the other states. I think it is not a good thing to do. Uh, we will lower the maintenance. Uh, let's uh, actually go back to the estates here. We will go over all the privileges. It might be a setup episode, but we will see. Uh, missionary strength would be nice to have. 
Um, I also want, the, of course, all the powers of all the uh, privil uh, estates. I want the uh, advisor cost to go down. Now, we are at stability 1, so I think I can pick this one now. Uh, we can get yearly 0.05. I mean, yeah, of course I take that one. Uh, we take oversight, so we have more loyalty. Now, I do need to keep this slot open for the admin points, so I think I will not pick the missionary strength one. Yeah, we'll leave the slot open for the plus one admin points. Uh, in the boyars, I want this one later on. I also need this one for our achievement or our goal to have maximum governing capacity. Um, no. Uh, yes, military advisor cost goes down. Rights of Council, Supremacy of the Crown, and we want the Strong Duchies. I want my Liberty Desire to go down, and I need more diplomatic relations. We have 5 out of 5 vessels, and I want to make more vessels. So we are going to take that one. Uh, what is this? Oh, that's an interesting one, but it costs Crown Land. So yeah, I'm going to pay, uh, pick this one for now. Do I? Because... <clears throat> then I cannot pick the military point, but that's going to take a long time. So I will pick this for the start of the game. Uh, burgers. Visor cost goes down. Free enterprise. Now we need something to, to get them above 60%, so we need to give them something else. Uh, I can give them Monopoly on textiles. Uh, no, well, it's not that bad. Uh, no, we don't want a loan for one percent interest. I think. I mean, it's only one percent. But we don't. We can't build anything right now. So I don't know. What do I get to get more points? You know what? Give them some monopoly for a temporary uh, boost, so we can go to above uh, sixty percent everywhere. And the Cossacks. Uh, we have a minus 50% local development cost as their provinces. No, we don't really care about that. It also costs crown land. We're not going to pick it. Uh, Cossack self-governance. So just this is just a bonus that is in every estate. Um, can recruit leaders. To get some army tradition. You know what? Yeah. And we can give them prime herming rights. Now do I want to pick this one? I think I have to. Mm, manpower, more manpower from the steps. Uh, yeah, I will pick it, this one. So uh, in the end, everyone will be loyal and we will not have any problems here. Uh, we can summon the diet, but in the beginning that is only annoying because you want to... You don't want to use your development and stuff, so... Now, let's uh, marry our... ...vessels. All of them. Uh, rivals. We want to rival Novgorod, so we want to rival Lithuania. We will see if they get in a union with Poland. And we want to rival Denmark. Uh, that is done. Let's take a look at our advisors. We will focus on admin points because we want to core the lands of Novgorod because we get permanent claims, which is minus uh, 50%, I think. Oh no, 25%. And we are gonna go for... Well, we don't have gold. Maybe we should keep that one away. I think I'm gonna take the uh, diplomatic reputation one. I mean, improving relations plus 20% is also very nice, but we have no because of expansion right now. And over here, we have only the manpower guy. Um... Hmm. I, w I still want the point, so I'm going to pick this one. Now, I think we are fine and can start. Let's uh, mothball the forts. What going to remove the forts. They, st they are still somewhat handy. Now, we need 10 points here to get our icon. I will try to get the development uh, one. So we can do a very good upgrade of Moscow for uh, for not that much monarch monarch points. That's going to be the goal at the start of the game. And to get the renaissance spreading. This is the the, the mission tree. Um, we get all the claims when we have 100% on our force limit. Then we can go after everything on Novgorod. Uh, we need to build 20 churches. 
And we need to get one province in this area, core it and make it orthodox. And then we get claims on a permit claim on a huge uh, chunk of land. And then we have to uh, continue north. We also have one separate one here of Perm. Uh, we have to integrate Perm. And then we need to colonize Western Siberia. And as the, uh, the third Rome DLC... Well, actually, I don't know if you need the DLC for it, but when you form Russia, you can freely colonize uh, Siberia. So we don't have to get exploration or expansion ideas for it. And uh, I don't want it, because it's a World Conquest run. Now, I think I did everything. We are now just going to build up our army. And split them out, because we get a lot of attrition in Russia. And let's uh, unpause the game and marry all our other vessels. So Perm as well. Marry you. And then we have left Belusero. There we go. Everyone is now uh, done. Uh, the first two vessels are Rostov and Yaroslav that I will integrate. So I guess we will improve relations with these ones. And let's see what happens with... Oh, this never happens normally. Lithuania allied Novgorod. Wow, I did six test runs or something and this never happened. Now, I really hope that Poland gets the Union, so Novgorod will lose the alliance. Yeah, there we go. This, these are the events to get Patriarch authority. I, I actually prefer to pay 44 ducats instead of having 10% more maintenance for the rest of the game. There we go. We will not get a loan, luckily. But yeah, you see what happens, guys, when Dutchie is going to uh, record Lithuania, Allied, Novgorod. It happened. <laughs> it's always the same. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe it. Well, actually I can. It's always happening. So yeah, speed 4. We have nothing else to do than build our army. Uh, Tver wants a marriage. Now, I want to conquer you at some point, so I don't think I will. No. Are you allied with someone? Novgorod is guaranteeing you, and Lithuania is guaranteeing you. How adorable. This is so ridiculous. Is this really happening? Please, please get Lithuania in a union. Otherwise I have to restart. Yes, they did. I don't know if, if I need to be happy about this, but uh, Poland has a union over Lithuania, which makes uh, Poland very strong. But that makes Novgorod very weak, and I like that. I'm happy that this happened. Uh, Riazan is now also free. They're allied with Imereti. That's that's weird. So we could vassalize Riazan. Uh, it could also be a good uh, war to do. But I will do that after the war with Novgorod, I think. And we need to first build up our army. So how much do we have? What is our maximum? Yeah, we need to build uh, eight more regiments. So we need a lot of money for it. But we are fine sitting on our hands for a while. You know what? Let's get the diet. What is this? Uh, manpower of 75%. Not gonna happen very soon. Have four? No. Tombov area. That is this one, right? Uh, yeah, we will take that one because that is going to be a goal. And then we get 50 admin power. Yeah, let's, let's uh, pick the Cossack uh, agenda here. That is fine. Uh, I think Livonian Order will be also eaten. I hope they will be eaten so that I can vassalize maybe one or two provinces and conquer the rest of it for free. Otherwise I will release it and conquer it later. France and England are at war. Of course they are. Of course they are. So merchants, they are steering from Kazan. And Kiev into Novgorod, who is, which is my main node.
And with our trade ideas we can steer the trade from Samarkand and Astrakhan and Crimea also up to our node. And that's going to be a good thing to do in my opinion. Yeah, Odiath will also be in the war because they are in the trade league with Novgorod. But that's not going to be a problem, I think. Need to build how much? Eight more. Let's go to eight and two on these armies. Actually, I think I'm just going to go to uh, nine each. I don't think they get attrition with... Uh, well... I think there will be enough supply with 9 troops almost everywhere. And I will also ask my vassals to uh, do the job here. Siege down Novgorod so I don't lose manpower. Yeah, it will be exactly enough. Click. We have a good general, a 3-4-3. Dimitri Shemiaka. If you have to gamble uh, how someone is called in Russia as a boy, you just you should just uh, say Dimitri, <laughs> right? I'm I, I'm guessing you you're calling Dimitri. Yes, you are. You are, and I am Dutchimir. Okay. Well, when we go to war, we don't have that much manpower, so we have to be very careful. Uh, it, it is possible that uh, the Great Horde declares war on your Kazan with their alliances and you are screwed when you have no manpower. It's going to be the last one I think. We cannot use our, our professionalism to do slack and recruiting standards unfortunately. Okay, let's have a look at our monarchy. Uh, we have minus 10% aggressive impact from uh, Grand Knias Vasily Teni Rurokovic. Rurikovic. We have a very good air, and we don't want to lose that one. But hey, a hunting accident is more likely to not happen, in my opinion. I'm not sure if that's true, but I think it is. Alright, we can click the button very soon. There we go. We have 100% um, uh, of our force limit, and we get claims everywhere. And these are permanent claims, which will give us minus 25% pouring cost. And we will use that bonus. We're not going to vassalize anything. We're not going to give this to our vassal. We are going to core everything from Novgorod. We are going to vassalize other stuff and integrate other things. Uh, what I can do is wait a bit. Get a bit of a buffer. Uh, what I also can do with my vessels, by the way, is make them give me money by telling them to divert their trade to me. This is very powerful. Because what is happening... The trade power of Yaroslavl here will go to me. And the trade power in Peskov here, the center one trade, will also go to me. That will make me a bit more money. We can see that in the next month, what this does to you. Uh, did it just stay the same? Um. I think we found the first bug. I think we found the first bug. They should not have any trade power. Scoff should not have any trade power. It should go to me. Maybe next month. I hope this is going to work. Oh, I think it... Yeah. Look. Look, I have more trade power than Novgorod now. And I make way more trade money. And in the meantime... Skov, Jaroslavl, Perm, Belusro and Rostov have no trade power. Okay, so we have to wait a bit longer. That is weird. Normally it happens in the next month, but apparently that is not the case anymore. Oh, and as long as they are happy enough, above 50%, you, you should really do this. Now, we are going to go to war. Uh, they are also having rebels. That is fantastic. 
gonna put you here. And I will tell my vassals that they can be aggressive and they should siege down all the provinces. Next month I will declare war. There we go. Um, are we gonna make Odoyev into a co-belligerent? Tver will join. And that happens. I don't want to fight Tver right now. And on the other hand, I could vassalize him, but that gives a lot of aggressive expansion. You know what? Let's do it. I will also make Tver co-belligerent, so we need to uh, take these nations out first. And let my vassals do the other things. Start of the game. We're gonna get the leader. So, there we go. We're gonna make them all co-belligerent. And the goal will be Torzok, because it's very easy to take and we get a ticking war score. And go. We're gonna kill with that one, you're gonna kill that one. We're we'll going to speed 3, so I don't make any mistakes. Oh yeah, they always escape. Okay, that is done. That's a level 1 forward, so we need... Let's say 4 units, and the rest will move out. Uh, we killed that one. My vessel will normally take care of it, so I will just move out well. Maybe I should help, actually. What is my vessel going to do? He's going to sit there. Um, let's do this real quick. I could move in, but I don't want to lose my manpower right now. And in the meantime, we will improving with the vessels we want to integrate first. Yeah, they're making units. It's very nice. Um, go here. No, no, you are belonging to this army. Go here and go here. Uh, we have two Yaroslavl armies. But I think... They will send war, and then I can move my armies out of that siege. Yeah, they are doing the job now. So I can move it out, and we can take the war goal. Get a ticking war score. Um, we could go in here, I think. Just be a bit careful. We need to, we need to siege Novgorod. We have to do it at some point. It would be nice if we don't lose too much men. How much armies do you have? You have 17,000 left. Okay. Really? <laughs> What's happening? Riazan got a union over Imereti. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's weird. Let's slowly move upwards. Uh, we need to put uh, 10,000 units on Novgorod. 9,000 plus spare to not get... Uh... Oh, I really want to take that one down, actually. Um, it's, bit ri it's a bit risky to go in and not knowing where their army is. But I'm gonna do it. Okay, there's 11,000. We will not attack it. We have no manpower to do this. I don't like that they are sending those troops there. Yeah, favor system. Uh, it's so overpowered. But we have no alliances, so we don't get any favors at the moment, I think. It would be nice if this full stack can siege Novgorod as well, at some point. Are you really getting attrition here? No, it was just because you were sieging it down. Okay, this is their whole army, so I feel a bit safe now to go here. Are they going to Moscow? Yeah, you can go back here as, as well. 
I prefer not to get devastation because I want to uh, build up my prosperity, but we will see. I will do this. Where are you going? Are you actually going to uh, attack Luki? I will not fight him, but I will jump on him when he is done with his battle. Oh my god, 17,000. Um, <laughs> yeah, are we gonna do this? I mean, we will win, but I prefer not to fight the battle. You know what? No. We will let them suffer. We're gonna lose the siege anyway, so yeah, we're gonna let him suffer. Uh, you're gonna lose. That's unfortunate for you. No stack wipe, or it was a stack wipe. Okay, very nice. It's getting summer, so we can move our troops a bit here. And I guess we just have to siege down Novgorod now. Let's keep the cavalry behind. You go here. You go here. You go here. Okay, we have Odoyev. Very nice. Maybe we can piece him out. I will core the land because it's just one province. Where are they going? Uh oh. They're gonna go here. No, they changed their mind. Now they're gonna go here. And now they don't know what to do. Yeah, you're all gonna go sit there. Okay. ODF. Not want to peace out yet. Okay, your I don't know what your problem is, but uh, I will take your land. So the Karelia down. I think when we have Novgorod, then we can peace out. I don't think we have to siege down Luki. Well, maybe we do have to siege it down if we want to take it in our peace deal. Improve with some other vessels that I have. I, they do have a lot of money, and I will take it. Um, you have to do three wars anyway on Novgorod because their total score is 232. So if if you take around 80% of the provinces, you can take 20% for the for the money. I think we can go to speed four now. Uh, stay here. I'm gonna go there. Yeah, he doesn't know what to do. He is going to attack Novgorod. No, he's not. He, he he doesn't know what he needs to do. He's dancing. And that's completely fine for me. Is he come? Is he going to do it now? Yes. So we will move in our troops. Make sure we win that battle. We have a better general, and that's it. And we are winning. I'm gonna completely stack wipe the army. Um, ooh. Let's not get alone. I'm gonna stack wipe that army. No, that army is not getting stack wiped. That is weird. No, 
we are almost done with this war. Um, lost a lot of men, though. I prefer to get Odoyev before the tick of the month, so we can have a one aggressive expansion tick down. Yes, we can take it. And we can core it. It's a bit expensive, but I want to core that one. And now we just need to siege down. This thing here. Now I have enough money to do this now. We don't get a loan. Improve. Hey, we have minus two unrest. That's going to be handy. We can lose money and we gain a lot of base stacks everywhere. I really want that. So it looks like we will get a loan unless we can peace out in time. I mean, uh, the default option is to take the first option. So we just let this run out. And take, hopefully, the siege here of, of Novgorod and actually take their money so we don't get a loan. Let's see if that is going to work. Oh yeah, we also need to siege uh, peace down Tver. Uh, we will make you a vessel. Wait, where is the vesselization option? Oh, here. We'll take your money. And Tver is now our sixth vessel. Uh, now we have enough money to do this, so I will click the button. And now we do not have to wait. But I will improve with Tver over here. Let's see how uh, bad the aggressive expansion is going to be. When we are done with this war. There's Novgorod. We'll take you home. We're going to peace out Novgorod. I will take the coastline so that Denmark cannot take this for Sweden. And how much money do you have? Yeah, we're going to do this. For the first war. Coalition with only Novgorod. Completely fine. And that was the first war. Where are my... Oh yeah, here are my horses. So, we need to core everything. Uh, we also have no war, war uh, exhaustion. I will core everything immediately. Uh, I will root out the corruption. But we don't get more. And then we are going to make money and to wait for the first things we can build. Which is not right now because we just spent all our points. We are now a great power. Lovegrot is eclipsed so we get plus one monarch point. And over here we can set new rivals. I will go with Poland. And now we have to take a look at the situation here. You are allied with Crimea. You are allied with Karaman, Uzbek and Timurids. You are rivaled with Kazan and a Great Horde. So I guess no guy will be an ally until I take down all of this. And you are rivaled with the Great Horde and you are rivaled with everyone. Uh, the Great Horde will be a very good one. Very good rival. There we go. It's also Embargo. Get a bit more points. Also Embargo Poland. And Embargo Denmark. I think I can also Embargo their vessels, but... Uh, yeah, let's do it. Should not give a trade penalty. Okay. 7-2, 7-2. And then we split those up and we will mothball the forts. Now that's going to be the first episode. Thanks for watching guys. In the next episode we will uh, recover our manpower, make money. And see what we can do with Riazan. And maybe make a plan or get an ally with uh, against Poland. I mean they are rivaled with Hungary. So we could maybe get Hungary and Bohemia as allies and fight Poland-Lithuania at some point. Uh, but we will see. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and uh, take a look at the Patreon. You will find it very soon in the outro video. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye bye.